Hello children, welcome to the ITV educational channel. I am Lalindi Damanupola from St. Anthony's Girls Convent Candy and I am representing the Department of Education Central Province. Okay children, so today I am going to focus you on the way how are we going to deal with the second paper and I am, I am hoping to deal with um, the poetry part of your second paper and I think I need to give you some guidelines and I will be talking about the format and then I'll be discussing some examples with you. Uh, so children, uh, I will just move on to my uh, first presentation slide. Okay, we'll go through it. Uh, it's about uh, guidelines to handle part two in your um, English literature paper. Okay, first I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the format of the paper and secondly I'm going to discuss some guidelines and finally I'm going to discuss some examples. Um, uh, that is, the, I mean, the first part and um, uh, secondly, uh, I feel children that uh, most of you, you find it very difficult when you're going to organize uh, this in the second paper, most probably the essay type questions. So uh, do not worry children because if you are going to score higher marks for your exam, I mean for your O level uh, literature paper, English paper, you need to have a lot of uh, things that you should, uh, I mean you have to uh, obey a lot of rules and regulations and then you have to write it down your paper. Uh, so uh, as I told you before children, my um, focus today is going to be on the poetry section in your um, literature paper part 2. Okay, children, so uh, we'll move on to the uh, second um, uh, slide. It is about the format of the literature paper. Now, children, um, this is the format of your literature paper. Just uh, have a clear idea about the paper. It says it is a three-hour paper, consists of part one and part two. And children, in part one, um, I think uh, I have seen, uh, they have discussed you uh, regarding part one, because part one divides into A and B, but uh, uh, in uh, part two, you all have not discussed anything regarding part two. And the other thing is, uh, part two, it consists of four essay type questions, children. Uh, okay, we can move on to them and uh, they are organized uh, under uh, different genres uh, such as poetry uh, and uh, uh, we get uh, poetry, prose, drama and fiction. Uh, so that's how the paper, the format of the paper is. First you need to have a clear idea regarding the format of the paper because the problem is children you might get excited because this is the first time maybe you're I mean facing a real examination maybe you have done it earlier with your teachers for your term test and other things but this is the first time that you're going to get the paper and um, please make sure that you follow all these guidelines okay so um, second uh, the, the next uh, what you call the slide, um, what I want to say is um, if you want to, uh, children, if you need to score higher marks, this is a new, I mean, subject for you. This is the first time that you're going to face in an examination. So if you want to higher, uh, high, uh, if you want to score higher marks, uh, there are some guidelines uh, which you need to follow. So uh, I, one by one I will be explaining this, don't worry because uh, you all are still students and there is time, ample time because there is one and a half like uh, months for you to go. So I will just go from one um, by one to discuss you about the guidelines. Okay, first as soon as you get the paper children, Okay, second, I mean the paper, when you have done, I mean before doing your first part even, I'm just talking generally about the whole paper here, 
uh, do not panic or get excited when you get the paper. This is, uh, as a teacher, for the most 23 years I have been experiencing, most of the time you get a paper, you start keeping on writing the things that comes to your mind. Please don't do it because this is the first time that you are going to do a paper, children. And this is not like the English language. This is something to do with critically analyzing, logical thinking. A lot of things are there when you are going to do uh, literature. So, children, be careful. Don't try to write as soon as possible. Just go through the paper very, in a, I mean, very in a calm way. Don't get excited, children. If you get excited, you won't be able to write anything. So, make sure that you follow all the guidelines uh, in the presentation which I have uh, mentioned here. And first read all the questions and select the easy ones or familiar ones. Read the questions over and over again but pay attention to the time. As I told you earlier children, you need to pay attention the select I mean, uh, now, you have been doing this for the uh, for two years, like in grade 10 and grade 11. There may be poems that you preferred most. So what you have to do here is, children, you need to select the things which you can write. Do not, I mean, go behind these things that you cannot understand or such things like that. But what you have to do is you need to uh, go one by one and select the most familiar and what you think that, that is easy easy for you children so and uh, but uh, now uh, if I say like this, you will keep on just uh, selecting your questions uh, like in a very slow manner, taking your time. No, you can't do that, children, because for the first and the second paper, you have got children only three hours. Now you have done part one, A and B. So there is a little, I mean, at least you need to pay um, because you are going to select some uh, questions like something like four. You need to pay attention for one at least, if you can allocate 30 minutes, that would be fine. Okay, children. And um, the other part I want to show is uh, when you select one you want, do not start writing. You may write unwanted, lengthy, irrelevant facts. As a teacher, when I go through the papers, I have seen you. we ask you something, you write something else. Please do not do it. You know why it happens? Because you start writing as soon as you get the paper. Please don't do it, my dear children. What you have to do is, if you start writing, 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 what happens to you? You write lengthy ones and then it ends in, uh, in a, uh, the way that, uh, the, uh, the way we want is not there. Expected things are not there. Irrelevant ones you will be uh, producing. So what happens here is, you think by writing pages, pages, pages that you can score good marks. No children, you should not because I will be uh, talking about those features uh, a little while uh, in a little while so uh, just uh, concentrate on these things that I'm going to tell you the next point is children uh, get an extra paper and draw a mind map so maybe this is a new thing for you as far as I know uh, for a candidate for students you can get lot of papers I mean extra papers so don't worry children you have papers they will give you papers any amount that you want but you make sure that you are using them and the thing is you need to draw a mind map children end of my lesson I am going to show you how to sketch mind maps because it's very important as far as I know even when I go for exams I also I'm also like a small kid I draw mind maps and all the things comes to your mind so make sure that you are drawing a mind map maybe some children in some schools you know what is a mind map piece we'll see don't worry don't panic I will teach you how to draw a mind map because you like to do such things as children okay and uh, the other one this will make you easy to gather all the important facts and the other thing uh, children please do not narrate the poems write what is expected from you this is another mistake that the children they do i mean you should do is when we ask a question you narrate the poem what you do is you say what 
10 where and uh, it's like writing the plot no you're not supposed to write a plot because write the plot in the sense because the thing is children in literature it's not an essay children it's something to do critically logical thinking analyzing thing lot of things are there i will be teaching these words in my um, end of my lesson because i need to uh, tell you because some children they don't know what is analyzing they don't know logical thinking they don't know critical thinking so they mix up everything and they think that we are just asking you to write the what you call this uh, narrate you're narrating the story to us here we don't want to listen to the story because we are the ones who have taught you the story and you're again producing the story for us we don't want to uh, i mean um, understand these type of things what you have to do is children you need to write you have to target the question they are expecting something from you you need to give that thing in a proper way then you get a good marks what you think is children you think madam i have written um, lengthy answers page two uh, three pages uh, like that so on uh, we gave lengthy answers but uh, we we have not scored marks so this is the real thing children because we when you give us a, a story again it's not a um, properly uh, guided one because the thing is this is literature students you're not going to write an essay this is not english language i mean this is not some anything to do with your language you need your language but the thing is pay your attention to these facts uh, next uh, point is i would like to talk about uh, you need to read between the lines to infer the hidden meaning the deeper meaning what is the meaning there children now you will wonder what is it what am i talking about i mean when you are doing literature as a teacher i have told my grade 10 students when they come for this uh, what you call the first class i always tell them this is not to write about the surface meaning this is something to do with the deeper meaning you need to go to the inner meaning of the question so be mindful about that also that's why um, you don't get good marks because you write something else what are we expect you you need to read between the lines sometimes when you read between the lines you feel it's a so simple uh, i mean uh, thing that the poet was to know there is a big message behind this because always a poet an author what he wants to do is he wants to give you a big message to the society so that message is between the lines then you have to read between the lines children if not you won't be able to produce a good um, i mean piece of writing because you will do something else Please, children, if you think that you can write something and come and just uh, give that in your paper, no, it is not going to happen, children. You have to be ready to give a critical analysis. You have to think in a logical way. If I say, if I have taught you white color, you if the paper will ask you to write something in black color. So then you will tell, are you, madam, have taught, they have taught us only to write in white. What about black color? That's how the literature students should think your critical power should be very high okay we'll move on to the next point children and uh, the other one use quotes and uh, techniques relevant at the appropriate place here children what um, now you will wonder why do we want techniques and quotes here yes children this is something to do with literature what you have to do is don't keep on writing the same thing what you have to do is children you need to have quotations you had to i mean by heart then that's why we have told you from grade 10 to buy heart this is this is not the last moment for you to buy heart by now i think you have learned by heart a lot of quotations and where and in a, what do you call this uh, uh, in an um, your answer you need to uh, you're like a lawyer children what you have to do is you have to show the point this is the point this is why i'm writing so here i am going to quote this part and this is the technique that they have used okay if uh, for an example if i can say uh, this character is very innocent so you can if uh, so to prove it they will use a simile or a metaphor then you have to uh, use it there and say so this is the fact they have mentioned about this simile they have mentioned about this metaphor because of that i am telling this person is so innocent that is the fact you are like a lawyer that means you are giving uh, what you call the technique as plus the 
uh, quotations that is uh, what is necessary but when i have gone through your papers children not all there are some children who can write well uh, they give something as the we uh, teach them the techniques something and they produce it in the writing in a different way no it is not happening if you want to talk about a simile or a metaphor then there, there should be a comparison so likewise you need to find where the oxymoron goes where the juxtapose is going uh, where the irony is there you have to find these things i mean remember sometimes irony is mixing with oxymoron oxymoron is mixed with paradox be careful when you're writing these techniques okay so go through your techniques very clearly before your exam and um, please by heart these things okay we'll move on to the other point children having a thorough idea about different themes understand them logically to build up a good argument here i want to tell you children now you will wonder what type of questions do we get that's what i'm going to talk about we are going to talk about themes children i think uh, in your schools your teachers for your exams you have normally you get a theme a thematic approach like that uh, is something like um, if you talk about the eagle it goes as as a nature thing or uh, about uh, authority people so there is a, a theme because this is uh, this, this is the, uh, the the message that the poet wants to tell us so it's in a thematic way so you have to find what is the theme and according to the theme you have to write i mean you have to answer the second paper children you cannot write the things that you want you have to read the question well in the question children a theme is there you have to find you have to be very cunning you have to be very careful you have to look for the theme because we have given all you the all the themes in a poem in prose and in all the things we have in all the, the four genres we have taught you the themes children so make sure that you have studied it by now you should have done those things right and the other thing is um, each of the sub questions provide you with a choice of questions selecting one from each genre it's like this children now when you get the paper for the second one what you have to do is i'm not going to talk about the first part because my madam has explained about first part a and b my duty is to uh, guide you in part two in part two children you have to select um, anyway you have to write four essay type questions now it's like this some children they select all the four questions from poetry all the questions from prose all the questions from drama and all from your, my, the novel this is not going to happen this is not the correct way children you have to select four from each genre what is the genre for children now you know for the, i have taught you four genres one is the poem your poetry the other one is prose there and the next one is about drama and fiction from each genre you have to select only one children now you you must be thinking like this madam we know all the poems yeah that is true but make sure when you read you select the most appropriate easy one which you can write uh, because uh, some children they are used to write lengthy 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 answers about poems so that's a good thing but in a better way so if you th if you think you are uh, you are you have a good poem with lot of quotations with all the techniques and all so then get prepared and there is another mistake my dear children what you do is you know what you do i have found it you know what they do uh, they do is they uh, at home they prepare their own theme or they go through a paper and they find the theme according to that theme they write down we'll say now about nine they have found a theme like this um, write the poem in two perspectives one is uh, uh, as a holy uh, venerated one and the uh, nile you see as a normal one so you are prepared for that when we ask something else about the Nile, about um, something, what you uh, do is you write the same thing that you have learned. No, that is not going to happen because the things, the I mean the paper asks another theme, but you have learned another theme and you have by hearted it as a parrot and then you come and write it down. No children, don't ever do it because you are going to lose marks i think you need to have you need to have a rough paper and that's what i'm going to tell you how to draw a mind map 
Okay, children, so um, we'll talk about uh, how we are going to give you marks that is very essential for you. I'm going to tell you how are you going to score marks. First one, each question is allocated 15 marks. It's like, uh, uh, like you're going to get for one 15 marks and for all the four you're going to get 60 mark for the second paper you know for the first paper you're going to get 40 marks and for the second paper you're going to get 60 marks and uh, for the criteria uh, for me uh, mark if the second paper is for content children you get um, uh, you get uh, uh, seven marks what is there in the content I, I'll just explain these things first contain seven marks organizing four marks language four marks all together the total is 15 marks okay now we'll talk one by one what is the content here children content means in your paper just look at the screen it's seven marks you are going to get seven marks for your content the, uh, the meaning is content means all the relevant facts should be there be careful children because you are going to get seven marks that is the easiest way how you can uh, gather your marks the seven marks are given for your content uh, when we go to the organizing part children uh, uh, for organizing you will want to do these things are uh, really new for you because you all are children you don't know because the teachers only know about this marking scheme what you should know is for organizing you get children four marks how do we organize it's like a well-ordered children now your question pair your question that you're going to write you need to well organize it like the beginning the body should be there the end should be there in a nice way and very attractive way uh, like that and um, uh, the other part is uh, for language you get four marks this is the biggest mistake most of our children they do when it comes for the writing part children be careful uh, when you are going uh, when you are uh, when you have to uh, pay attention for your language children what you have to do is be mindful about your spellings and about your grammar especially it's like this you need to have a rich if you have i don't say uh, if you have a rich vocabulary like a bombastic language is very good for you because if you put write down certain uh, good uh, i mean words rich vocabulary things then you can gain a lot of marks a lot of in the sense you get four marks for that this is the place where our school children uh, doesn't get marks for this uh, grammar part uh, right so be careful for your be mindful when you're writing the grammar especially uh, what is the grammar part that you uh, miss a lot because when it comes for the third uh, person singular you forget to put the s that's a problem right when it comes she runs you right she run so then again the teacher sees it and then she marks it wrong in vain children because you have a lot of information because of grammar because of spellings and children remember when you're writing about the author about the poem make sure that you write in capital letters where it's necessary because some children we say uh, for an example we say uh, to the nine two you write t as simple uh, denial simple and these are the mistakes that you do as children so this you have to eradicate all these um, I mean things and then you have to give a proper writing part children be careful when writing when I uh, when you have to pay attention for your grammar part okay and uh, the other thing is uh, you know, now this is very important children now what I'm going to talk here uh, look at the slide here again uh, to my next point if they ask you a question like do you agree what do you think about it do not ignore it first address the question in the middle or at the end of the question now as a teacher i have seen if in your paper this has been asked like do you agree what do you think about it you totally forget about it why children because you have a mind map in your mind you start writing that's why i told you not to write like that do you agree first you need to address it you must say whether you agree or not but you will say like this madam i do not agree i have no problem this is literature 
we don't ask you to agree for all the things but make sure children if you don't agree to one of these things for a theme what you have to do is you need to i mean um, give evidence there you just cannot say no madam i don't agree with this and this, this is like that no you cannot say like that you must say i do not agree on these grounds on this because of this i do not agree with it so that is my choice okay no problem children but make sure you're like a lawyer here you need to have evidence if you have evidence you're up on the deal so don't worry and the other thing is uh, when you have to say now some children they the way the writing style is different right children my writing style is different your writing uh, style is different it's like this some say do you agree some they don't uh, write it at the beginning of the uh, uh, writing part uh, maybe in the middle or at the end of no problem it's your choice but make sure you address it do you agree or what do you think about it first talk about it and then go through when you have that in your mind children you can lie, write lot of things because it gives you a clue an opening sentence do you agree what do you think about it they have asked from you so you have ample time and you can gain lot of information when they ask such things don't forget about this i have seen in my papers children totally forget about it and then they write what they want but first you have to say whether you agree or not okay make sure that we'll go to the next point uh, Paragraph should be well organized, especially an interesting introduction, a valid logical conclusion. When you're writing a piece of writing children, when you're, it should be well organized. It's like this, uh, the beginning, uh, we, we call it the introduction children. When you're writing the introduction, it should be in a such an interesting way. For the introduction, don't worry, you can write about the poem. And you can write about the author, but children do not lie, lend the information about the poet or author. No one is going to, um, no one bothers about the poet or the author's uh, family background, the day he was born, the day he died. No, that is not relevant to your question, children, because you are writing under a theme. For that theme, you see, if the poet has contributed for the theme, then of course you need to write that part of the poem and the author do not write uh, the places that he was and the things that he did it's unnecessary children be careful when you're writing that and when it comes to the body also it's the same write it in an interesting way make sure that you keep space every paragraph you keep the margin and then you write don't write at a stretch children it's very ugly and the marker is where feels very difficult to mark it children what you have to do is write the introduction and then keep some gap and then go to the body and when you're concluding children finally uh, this is my uh, point of view those are the words that you should use and give it in a nice way because of this I am accepting this or I agree with it and then your agree part can come there because of this part I do agree with you or I do not agree with you you can write do you agree there and or what do you think about it can come at the end of your writing part be careful when you're writing it children okay next one uh, as I told you, um, your grammar, spellings, and make sure that you use a rich vocabulary when you're writing because for these things you gain a lot of marks, children. Okay, you, I think you can remember because I have uh, talked about the uh, marking scheme and the scores, how you score marks. Okay, next one, allocate your time usefully. Do not write till the last moment and panic. This is what you do till the last moment. You keep on writing, children. Sometimes the uh, what do you call the examiner, the person has to take your by force, pull your paper and take it till the last moment. Don't write, children. You need to be, they will give you a string type of thing that you need to tie it. Especially when you have ten minutes, you tie it and then keep on writing. Because when you, the last moment, if you go to tie your paper, what happens is uh, most of the papers, um, uh, uh, you miss one paper and you do not know according to the number of which one it comes because you are excited. Make sure that uh, last moment you should not panic. What you have to do is uh, keep all the papers safely and then tie it up and then start writing. Then no problem. You have a lot of time, but make 
please make sure that you pay your attention to your time at least keep a watch um, uh, on your table and then uh, just have a clear idea about the time be careful because you're this is the first time you all are innocent children and this is the first time you are going to face the o level examination this is the first time that you are going to do a public exam so maybe you will be worried and excited and please do not panic children because it will not help you at all be relaxed right okay and um, lastly i would like to talk about um, not last uh, look at the question uh, critically and analyze it, how you can write and what you feel about need to have evidence. Uh, children, when you are writing the second part, as I told you earlier, you need to criticize, uh, critically analyze it, right? I will be teaching you what is it about, critically analyze and then you have to get, give the answer and um, don't just write it as an essay you are not going to do, uh, write an essay here though we say essay type of a question we uh, it's a type of a question the way it's written but it's not an essay children it's uh, what you call critically logically thinking question so be careful children there and at last i would like to uh, tell you recheck what you have written twice before handing over the paper now before handing over the paper you need to have a time children to have have uh, to check it, recheck it. I mean, uh, don't wait till the last moment. Recheck your spellings, your grammar, all the things. Uh, make sure that you put the, all the numbers in your pages, right? Especially your index number, children. Make sure all the pages are there. Uh, and especially when you are writing the what you call this extra paper when you take. Please make sure that you attach them, children. But they are also it's better if you can write your index number. Index number, page numbers. Be mindful about these things because you all are small children and this is the first time. Okay, don't worry. So we are there to guide you. Don't worry, children. Okay, we'll be moving on to the next um, presentation. Okay, children. Uh, I will go quickly because um, what I want to say is... Uh, According to uh, the poems are divided according to five themes here. As you know, what are the themes you have learned from grade 10 you are learning? What is the theme? The first theme that you are learning in grade 10 is about nature. Then it comes to the second one as conflict. Then the third one comes as society. Fourth one comes as life. And the last one comes as human. Okay, children. And I have... Uh, in my presentation, I have gathered it according to the what you call these themes and all, and the poet is there. Make sure that you write the correct one under nature, under conflict, under society, under life, children, under humor. There are each you have four four poems. So it's easy for you because I have given you and you know it because in schools you know when uh, when we talk about a poem you tell madam this is the theme right I know that you know it right so that's good okay and next slide I would like to talk about um, this is what I need to talk about children um, in this slide you can see the names of the poems and the years taken for the GC O level examination English literature paper from 2016 to 2019 children now I have uh, I have just gathered all the 20 poems and some poems they have not touched but some poems you can see you look at the presentation some poems they have taken for two years some for one year some for uh, they have not touched it at all so just go through it children i will not talk about it because you can go through from 2016 to 2019 i have mentioned all the poems um, there are some poems children which i would like to talk about voice kind they have taken twice and the camel sum uh, it's under humor they have taken it for um, what you call um, uh, two years so here children still they have not touched the eagle I have put across there the things that they have not touched yet there are four poems children the eagle farewell to Barnes Tech country other one Richard Curry and Big Mesh 1983 upside down children there is a small problem here uh, now you will wonder why when it comes to number seven farewell to Barnes Tech country 
and especially this one, the big match 1983, there is a small issue there, children, because the themes are not that relevant for the for a school going child. So what they have do is uh, they are purposely just ignoring it. But I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I think it's better for you to get ready for these things also, right? Uh, but they don't like to talk about a uh, fratricide is uh, mentioned in Fairway to Barnett Secondary, and the big match is something ab about a conflict, about a racial conflict, right? So I think um, they do not like that uh, the children should go through these poems, something like that. They have maybe there is an issue that's why they have not touched this thing we do not know we might get it for 2020 but make sure i like this poem the eagle they have not touched i don't know why and um, the other one is uh, richard Corey and upside down upside down is not her i mean it comes under humor but the thing is there is nothing that um, it's it's a silly thing not children but there is a big message behind it i think because of that purpose they are ignoring it but i think if you can uh, just go through the eagle and richard Corey, you be careful because i am going to talk about these two questions today uh, i'm going to teach you how to do, draw a mind map so from there i will be talking about these issues so please children go through these poems and the uh, years that they have mentioned the poems and sometimes you will say madam you said in 2019 we have got a bird came down for oh, but for this time also we got it yes children be careful i think by now two years two years 20 poems I mean, just imagine for uh, for one ter one year you can learn ten poems, and the other uh, half you can learn uh, in grade level. So by now you are thorough with all these poems. So you can say, Madam, that came I did not write. No, don't uh, don't find excuses, children. You all are children. These are really nice poems, right? Very interesting, and you learn a big lesson there. There is a message given by the uh, poet. So be careful when you're writing these things and I hope you will be able to write it in a better way. Uh, okay, I will be moving to the other slide. This is the most important slides here because this is the place that you find very difficult to do. Now look at this type of questions in the English literature paper. I have stated 10. Out of these 10, I don't think that you will get uh, questions, I mean different questions, but these words will be there. Now, when I see in uh, term tests and uh, year end tests, this and that, uh, sometimes the students get the answer. They do not know, understand what is the meaning of that answer. So these are the things that I have target and what I thought was that I should um, I mean um, help you by writing the theme and the statement and how these questions are there sometimes children ask madam can you just tell me the name I mean the meaning of this word because you all are not familiar so for that I have taken this presentation this this special slide for you to understand the meaning of those Difficult words, maybe because you all are children, you can't understand a uh, uh, lot of, uh, because you all don't have a lot of vocabulary, that's the problem. So I will help you here. Uh, number one, now it's like this. This is the way that they ask you questions. Do you agree with this statement? Support your answer by referring to the text. Before that, they will give you a theme or a statement. And they will ask, do you agree? This is the earlier one which I spoke with you. And that is that. We'll go to the second one. Critically examine this statement. And this is the place where you find you find it difficult. Critically, madam, what is critically? Uh, there. That is the word that I want to tell you, talk about. Critically means, children, I told you, you're, you're like a lawyer. What you have to do is critically means you need to have a lot of evidence. Evidence should be there. How are you going to find the evidence, children? Then you need to make sure the relevant, um, what you call the quotations and the relevant techniques. If you have that, you can critically examine anything, right? So you're like a lawyer because you have evidence. Because of this, I'm telling this. That's, that's uh, very clear, right? We'll go to the third one, children. Justify your answer with close reference to the poem. Justify. What do you mean justify? It's like to be just or 
to be, I mean, is, uh, whether it's right, justified, whether it's right, with, uh, with close reference to the poem. What do you mean with close reference? There are references where you can find in the poem. You have to quote it and then say, because of this, I justify this. Huh? I can write like this because of this evidence is there because you're you're taking close reference in the sense children you're going you can remember the lines of these poems because some children they are very clever they can buy heart the whole poem they know the whole poem because they have spent a lot of time on uh, by hearting poems maybe that is their hobby right so that is a good thing when you're writing justify uh, justify your answer it's like that, justifying your answer. It's like uh, to be just or to be right, what your writing is, okay? We'll move on to the fourth one very soon. Discuss your uh, with your close uh, citation from the poem. Support your answers with example from the same things. Your citation should be there from the poem. Um, that's how you are going to support your answer. And the fifth one is, again, a theme and a statement. Do you agree? elucidate your answer with examples from the poem right so there is a, a word here mm, elucidate the meaning of it is uh, to prove with clarifications you need to prove it with your clarification clarifying with supporting with the examples taken from the poem next one uh, illustrate your answer with examples from the poem Okay, uh, illustrating is also like uh, clarifying with examples, same thing, but you need to have an um, uh, idea about these words. Write an analysis, discussing the contribution to the main central theme. What is the meaning of it? Is the, the meaning, simple meaning is main idea of the poem. So, analysis, analysing means reasoning things, reason, you need to give reasons. So, that's the meaning of that. And the other one, number eight is, what is your point of view of the central theme, main theme, main idea, same thing, main idea, right, the meaning. Uh, what is your point of view about the central theme, means uh, about the theme, I, as I told you earlier, about the theme, your idea. Maybe you don't uh, like it, you don't agree. That's what you have to write. And number nine is, analyze this statement critically. Analyzing things, a statement, right? You analyze it, uh, you give give it in a different way, you an analyze things. In a statement, uh, it can be critically, like I told you, logical thinking. Uh, the last one is, does this above statement sum up with the main idea of the poem? Sum up is like this, children. Now, when you get a poem, uh, you have to find your own theme there, right? Uh, for an example, if we say about uh, eagle, they will ask you, is something to do with nature? It's nature. Uh, so, it's like that. You have to find your appropriate theme there and then according to that theme, you need to sum up your um, things you need to critically analyze all the things comes there and uh, according to the theme so uh, now this is what I want to talk about uh, this is how to sketch a map children um, this is the way and this is a dif difficult part here because I have seen in the papers if you get a question like this you won't be able to do it because you are, you do not know the uh, features of a sonnet uh, it's easy for you because i have given you examples uh, what are the sonnet features you see in this poem oh, when you get a uh, i mean a question like that you panic my goodness now what are the features of a uh, uh, sonnet and the next one they ask uh, what are the features of a ballad then you don't, uh, then you, uh, sometimes you mix with the ballads and so on. So that's why I have taken you a mind map here. You know what is a mind map, children? I, I think uh, it's better you draw a circle there. You draw a circle, we'll say a sonnet feature. Now, sonnet features is a, a little bit difficult. Uh, in a sonnet feature, you have the rhyming schemes like A, B, B, A, B, B, A, C, D, C, D, like that. Then Italian Petrarchan, it's, 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 it comes under, the Italian Petrarchan is um, known as um, uh, Petrarch who found this and it belongs to the rhyming scheme and 14 lines thing like that. Then iambic pentameter means 10 syllables. I had divided the unstressed stress 
unstressed way. So this is how I do not have, I mean, the time to explain you a lot, but I will just go through it. Then the Volta is there. Volta means the changing place of a sonnet. So the sonnet, when we are learning about the sonnet features, it comes under nine to the nine. So when so there is a Volta there. What is a Volta? It's a technique. The Volta means they are yeah, the, your, the, I mean, change in the rhyming groups there because you can see A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. From there, you change up, it comes the water there. And then what happens is uh, the subject matter changes. What is the uh, line there? Rest for a space, twist, Cairo, and Deccan. So that is the place where you find the water in to the Nile poem, right? So that's that. And the other one is the pentameter. Penta is five meters. So it's like that. Unstressed one and a stressed one is one, uh, one meter. Unstressed one and a stressed one is a uh, second one. It's like that. You get five meters, children. Unstressed one, stressed one. Okay. Uh, maybe your uh, children, uh, my teachers, they have taught you this thing. Next one, um, sonnet feature is a sustain. You know, in a sonnet feature, especially when we are talking about the Italian Petrarchan, what you need is children, it divides into two parts. What is it? One is the first part, uh, eight parts are the octave, and the second six parts are, parts are it's, uh, the sustain. So it is regarding that. Uh, what, is, what happens in octave? Octave children. Actually, in an octave, a question is raised. In the third state, what happens? You uh, you give answers to that question. So the question is solved there, and it's fourteen lines. So that is about a uh, sonnet feature. I think it's better if, if I move on to this question, children, because this is very important. This is how I I saw this in a recent paper. Tennyson's Eagle is about old age and death. Do you agree? Again, I told you, do I agree? Right, right. Now, now you may wonder, how, Madam, how are we going to draw a mind map? Okay, what you have to do is you have to draw the, write down the theme in a circle, like I, I have written here a square, I mean a rectangle, but make sure you draw a circle. Eagle as old age and death. Madam, we have learnt eagle as nature and as an authority person. No, there are a lot of themes on the eagle. You can get this as old age and death. Now you will wonder, my goodness, madam, what are you talking? Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about. So now when you talk about the eagle, you just write down the things that comes to your mind. What? The crag, close to the sun, crooked hands, wrinkles, crawls, loneliness, thunderbolt as he falls, mountain walls. Madam, what are these things? Okay, I'm going to explain it. Crag. When you talk about a crag children, when you think of an old person and he's close to uh, his death or her deathbed, what is a crag? Crag is an unpleasant or a difficult place for that person to survive. Just imagine the crag, how the eagle is uh, holding the crag. Uh, with the crooked, with his its crooked hands, so it shows the crag. Is, do you like to uh, draw a crag and just take pictures of crags? No, because it's an unpleasant picture. So where are the old people? They are in like in a crag, on a crag. It's like that. Uh, the reason is on a crag in the sense is uh, uh, because that person is living a very difficult life. So that is that, and close to the sun. When it comes to the uh, when it comes to close to the sun children, they are almost experienced people because they are now old. They have a lot of experience, and they are close to the sun in the sense they are close to their maximum life. I mean, that's the end of their lives, so they are very close to the sun about to burn, you can take that toss, so no problem, it's up to you. And what do you mean crooked hands children? Have you seen crooked hands, uh, Hands, even people they have, eagles they have crooked hands. But if I have seen some old people, they are, their hands are crooked. That's how, because they are unbalanced children, they are deformed because of, they have done a lot of work from their hands, right? They have toiled in their uh, childhood uh, in their young age and now they are no they don't have any strength so their hands are crooked that means they are disabled right poor thing right it all uh, it happens to all of us right then the old age and that wrinkles see what do you mean wrinkles see what do you mean of that you the bird see uh, but the bird is in a higher crack and it sees the sea as wrinkles 
in a small way. What do you mean like that? Because you, the old person have a lot of wrinkles in his body or her body. Wrinkles are there. Your hands, your face. You have seen old people. They have wrinkled skin children. Right? Okay. Uh, the crawl, what happens? Crawls mean the space that they are moving. They are very slow children. Their activities are very slow. We shout sometimes, no? But the thing is, even we are going to we are going to face it. We, they crawl like in the sense they are very slow in their um, um, motions, the pace. Okay, when it comes to lonely lands, now you will wonder, madam, what is the meaning of lonely lands of old people and death? Why? Old people, they are almost lonely. They, are, they, are, they have kept away from their loved ones. They like to be with the society, but we have kept them out of society and their loved ones away from them. And can't you take it? For death or the lonely lands, what do you mean? Lonely lands, children, it's like your cemetery, right? Where you're buried, you're lonely, nobody's there for you, children. You're all alone with that tomb of you. That's all you have. So you can take that also. You can talk about old age or death, no problem. What do you mean thunderbolt he falls? He falls like a thunderbolt. What is that? Unexpected situation. We do not know at what time an, an elderly person, old person will die. It's like a thunderbolt. No idea when it will happen. It's like a I mean, powerful thing. It, they fall and then, then they die. So that's what the meaning of it. And mountain walls. What do you mean mountain walls? Don't you feel that the old people are covered inside the house and uh, they are locked up and uh, the fences there, the gates are there? They are inside the children. They are like prisoners. Because if they come out, they will uh, face a lot of danger situations. So because of that, they are inside children. So in this, now look at this. I have written only few words. In that few words, how many things that you can take children? Lot of things you can write, pages and pages. Because you have an idea about old people and death. Okay, uh, next uh, uh, next one, the same thing from the same poem. Uh, sometimes they, they take unpleasant uh, themes and they take pleasant themes also. Now, if we say like this, it is a symbol of power, quality of authority men, which are parallel to the bird. Bird is parallel to an authority person. Now, earlier we talk about an unpleasant thing. Here we are going to talk about a pleasant thing, like an authority person. Now, you know, you have seen authority people in the society. Now, what are the things? Just jot down the things that you comes into your mind. Close to the sun, class. Crooked hands, he watches from his mountain walls, lowly lands, cross like a th same thing I have taken. Because same thing, because this is, this, uh, the eagle is a short poem in your uh, syllabus. So, what do you mean close to the sun? Um, close to the sun. Authority people, they are very close. And that means they have uh, they are, the, the power that they have. They are very close to the sun, mean the sense they, with their power, na, with their power, they can do wonders. I mean, they are corrupted. That's also here. Because when you get closer to the sun, you can burn and die. So they are very corrupted and they have a lot of power. And when it's clasped, what is it? Holding for their positions. They will never allow another person to come to that position, they will just hold it tightly and will not allow any person to come there. Okay, crooked hands again, corruption is there, ne? authority people, corruption is there. With their hands they have done blunders, I mean corrupted people with their hands because they, do, they use their hands, so it's like corrupted. He watches from his mountain walls, what do you mean by that? Authority people, uh, uh, they are always um, I mean, they are always um, with protection. They are the people around them. They are very protected. They will not um, have any. They will not face any danger. All the people around them. Loneliness. What do you mean? Don't you see the children, authority people like kings, like politicians, they are almost in lonely lands in the sense they are almost isolated from the society in the sense they do not get close to the society, they are almost al al alone only with their families. Okay, and cross in the sense here, I, I would like to take cross with the wrinkle, see beneath him cross, because cross has come there. What do you mean? Authority people now, just imagine the bird is in a higher 
place in on the crack now it's looking at the sea like this and it sees the wrinkled sea beneath him crawl beneath him from that word what can it take you can take the common people how they move he says ah i am mightier than the others huh? because they are crawling because they have no other work i mean they are very helpless people my common the commoner the, the commoners they are just i mean idling they have nothing to do they are crawling and they are lower than me i am in a higher place that is the thing and the other one ring with the azure world he stands you know azure world the blue sky it's like this ring with the like you're wearing a crown you have a lot of power dignity you're like a king you can do wonders what do you mean like children authority people like a thunderbolt he was in the sense like a thunderbolt he can impose any rule on the commoner don't you think on the public he can impose rules and he falls maybe can be his um, last time of his uh, um, um, uh, place and it's, it's like this can be the last time of his um, service it's like that like a thunderbolt he falls in your imp i mean the laws that you uh, uh, impose on children uh, on the society okay appearance of uh, the other one is a uh, re um, uh, that's what I told you to pay attention on uh, Richard Curry because this time you might get it appearance versus reality do you agree I have taken two sides for appearance and reality also children appearance of Richard Curry is in the sense in here all these words represent he as a gentleman he is very schooled in every grace that means he's educated in all the aspects and he was he is rich he is a gentleman he was everything appearance of him when you look at richard Curry, you see him as a marvelous person like a gentleman because when he walks he glitters neither always human when he talks when he talks he talks in a nice a very mannered way and uh, wish that we were in his place we the common people on the pavement wish and when we if we can be um, at his place right it's like that quietly arrayed richer than a king okay uh, his name is rich hood now then see there rich chad rich is there almost there because his name also shows that he's very rich and clean uh, favored uh, he glittered when he walks it's like that so all these things shows his appearance the positive side of his appearance when we go to the other point other slide you can see the reality of Richard Curry now can you remember in Richard Curry he committed suicide why now you you think madam there are people like that in the society yeah there are people we, we look at a person and say my goodness he is well off but to see the reality is not that children sometimes uh, there are gunavati there are rupavatis but the thing is the name does not have any thing regarding to that person's personality it's like that richard rich you think he's rich we'll see okay reality of richard Curry walking on the pavement why is he walking on the pavement he should have had had his vehicle and why is he walking on the pavement who walks on the pavement do you think uh, i mean the rich people and the uh, so-called high class people they walk on the pavement i don't think so imperially slim it, it is something to do with children it is something to do with there is a oxymoron there why do we call it an oxymoron children imperially something is slim is something is something totally different what do you mean imperial is like you're a king but you're slim how can you become a king and you're slim so there is an oxymoron there okay then it's like that and the other one he uh, but he fluttered pulses what do you mean like uh, there fluttered pulses mean when he says good morning to other people he gets fluttered and excited why is he getting excited and the other one calm summer night calm summer night in the sense children it's a very nice i mean calm very calm summer is the uh, time where people enjoy a lot and it's a night why do people come in sweet side he should i mean be happy at this time but he committed suicide he went downtown why didn't he go uptown why did he go downtown he should he belongs to the uptown and he had gone to downtown so these are the and the pathetic situation is put a bullet through his head just imagine uh, to put a bullet through his head do we feel like doing something we get scared ne? thinking that something will happen to our brain but the thing is he put a bullet means in the way 
that's the end of his life he does not want to leave maybe he has a lot of issues there move on to the next slide here the terrorist is watching dramatically presents the tension of a terrorist there are two aspects when we are talking about the 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 what he called this poem the terrorist is watching most of the children find it difficult to find whether this is the terrorist or whether this is the narrator that's what i thought i'll take this as the narrator and as the terrorist you can take but you need to have evidence children now when you take if you have to answer this poem as a terrorist you need to have evidence how tension of a terrorist in the same short one he is lucky even though he is a terrorist children, he may have tension because he is also a human person. He has tension. Now he says, short one, he is lucky. My goodness, the short one is lucky. He is going out. Okay. Uh, she, did she go in or not? Can you remember that girl who was wearing the green ribbon? Did she go in or not? Maybe he has tension. My goodness, don't know whether she has gone in or not. What about the countdown technique there, children? He is counting now, children. Like this, there are five minutes, two minutes, like that, uh, two seconds, like that. He's telling. Why is it? Because he's also tense now. All right. Okay, we go move on to the other one. Watching the people who are going in. He's watching the people who are going in. My goodness, you're going in. He's coming out. He has, he's giving details of the people who are in and who are out, who are wearing this, uh, the jacket color and everything, colors, he's giving the colors and the size uh, size of the person, he's tall, this one is short, like that he's giving. He goes back uh, in for his crummy gloves, crummy gloves in the sense for an unwanted thing, a person goes in. That's how you face danger, because for unwanted things, yeah. I mean, you had to be careful. Like that, he's asking, was she that dumb? Is she dumb to go inside that he's tense, right? Now we can see the same thing as a narrator, as a sympathetic person, the narrator as a sympathetic person. Apart from the attitude of the terrorist, the narrator, we'll see. Because the narrator feels sympathy towards the victims, we'll see. Because the narrator is the person who is looking, ah, oh, yeah, the uh, terrorist is crossing the road. Yeah, I can see, the narrator is also there, terrorist also there, but you can take as a terrorist or the terrorist as a, what you call a um, tense person feeling sorry for the victims. Here the, narrators, uh, here the narrator we see as a sympathetic person, why? The short one, he's lucky. My goodness, he's lucky. He's getting into the onto the scoot and he's going. Was that she dumb again? The same thing, children. Did she go in or out? A countdown technique. My goodness, um, for the bomb to be blast is uh, it taking time. My my goodness, it's like that. And watching the people who are going in, giving details of the people. She is wearing the green ribbon. That uh, lady is wearing the uh, yellow jacket. It's like that and uh, waiting is taking the last one he says the waiting is taking forever my goodness how, for how many minutes we have to wait like this to see the disaster it should not happen maybe that's the thing or we can say my goodness how many minutes for the bomb to be blast because you're very happy about it and he goes back for his crummy glove. Why is he going back? Uh, why is he going for an unwanted thing? So that he feels sympathy towards the people. Okay, children. So this is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoy it. And I wish all the children all the very best for your O-level examination. And uh, till I see you again. Goodbye. Thank you very much.